Will It Run Windows 7, Episode 1. Today, it's the Stell Dimension B110. Looking at the outside. And now let's take a look inside. So, it takes a second to get the panel off. This is a socket 478 Pentium 4. Let's have a look at the cooler. Now, that's all aluminum. These things are also a bit of a pain to get off. So, all aluminum cooler, 2.53 gigahertz Celeron, and I believe an 845 chipset, 2 gigs of RAM DDR400. It's got a dial up modem, which we're not going to test. The hard drive, 80 gig, 7200 RPM, 8 megabyte cache, and a DVD burner. It's nice and clean. As you can see, we'll tilt it up and try to rub down the bottom. And there's no dirt in there. I've cleaned this thing out well. Nicely refurbished. Okay, let's get that side back on. And it's time to get Win 7 running. So kick it off. Here's the manufacturing date. Now this machine was able to boot from USB, but the boot time was ridiculously slow. We're speeding it up 16 times here, and you can see just how torturously slow it's loading the Windows 7 setup. It's almost there. So, we'll go about five minutes to hit the setup screen and kicking off the setup. It's gonna go ahead and expand files, and that takes a bit. Again, USB performance, either due to USB or CPU, was very, very slow. Nine minutes. Ten minutes. Twelve minutes. And here we go, reboot. And we're still at 16x speed. Starting up again for the next phase of installation. Here it goes again. This is part two of Windows 7 installation. And it's going to reboot again. And then here it does its first setup and we'll enter the username, the date and time, and everything. And it's ready to go. So, drivers, here we go with the chipset drivers. And those are getting installed. USB drivers in this generation are packed with the Intel chipset drivers. I'm installing those. And IDE controller driver. Gonna go ahead and reboot here. Modem. And sound. And last but not least, your video driver is gonna go in. Now this is an XP driver, and this chip said so old you're not going to get the arrow effect in Windows 7. Now we can go ahead and raise the screen resolution now. Six to eight hours to do Windows updates. Ouch, that took quite a while. And we're going to go performance test now. Here we go with startup. Startup time is shockingly good for a system of its vintage, but remember it doesn't have the original hard drive, it's got an 80 gig. 7200 RPM, 8 megabyte cache, so it is a little newer. But all things considered, it was able to hit the desktop fairly quickly, given that it's a Celeron CPU, only about 35 second boot time is fairly respectable. So here we're coming up on it. 
and that's a true boot time that's actually usable at around 35 40 seconds. You can see we can load up Notepad, load up Task Manager. Go ahead and view some photos, which is always a nice test of the responsiveness. Go and browse in the sample pictures there and open up one or two. And change my mind then. Let's go for wallpapers. There's thumbnailing is pretty fast. You can open those up and they pop up pretty quick. You can see a little glitchiness there on the graphics driver, but it scrolls through the gallery of uh, photos real quick. Brings them up almost instantly. So that's what you want. All right. Now going into some office apps. So this is your basic app performance. It's loading. LibreOffice, and LibreOffice does take a minute to come up. It's just not as fast loading as Microsoft Office, but I wanted something anyone could test and compare with on their own system. Yeah, we can type in, and we got some text going in, it's going in fine. So there's no lag when you're typing. Go ahead and do some quick formatting. All that works. Well, what about the uh, spreadsheet? Again, takes a second to load. Fabry Office, not lightning fast. We'll do a quick formula here. And it's still fairly responsive. So no problem with Office apps as you would expect, but if you only had 256 meg or 512 meg of RAM or a gig of RAM, it would be grinding a bit more. And you may have had to mod the Windows 7 installer to get it to go. So Office App's decent. But now here's where it gets to be a big chore. Let's go ahead and load up Firefox, go into Amazon, search for a flash drive. And she's still going. There's a flash drive. Scrolling down. Bringing this up is a little stressful. And it spins and spins. Guess what? It's not going to come up. You could probably place an order, but you're not going to be able to get into that gallery and it's going to take minutes just to get to the page. Here Chrome is complaining it's not responding. You saw keeps popping that up. You go into the task manager, CPU's pegged. And remember this is at 16x speed. You still can't bring up the image gallery. CPU's absolutely pegged. Okay. Video playback test, YouTube. Remember, this is old integrated graphics with a weak Celeron CPU. Yeah, it's not good. I think it's even on 144p. Ouch. It'll play eventually. I did not check the sound. Windows performance. CPU is alright. Graphics is weak. Disk was good. Um, the graphics is at 1 because of that lack of Windows Aero support. Here you can see some severe 2D artifacting when dragging Notepad around because no proper graphics driver. And let's test out the GIMP now for some image editing. I was surprised at this one. GIMP takes forever to load, but we'll go ahead and we'll open up a another wallpaper image here and we'll see how it does with image editing. So this would be like very, very lightweight image editing if you wanted to use this old machine to make memes on GIMP and redistribute them. You probably could, although your browser would take long to load. You can see we can go in here and we can adjust the... Let's make some adjustments like hue or saturation. It looks like we're in hue here. And you can see it applies the adjustments well. Now here's 7-zip. We're getting about 1 megabyte per second compression, 12 decompression. User benchmark running. And again, you can run this on your PC along with the 7-zip2. Let's see what we got. We got pretty low ratings. 
But let's have a look at what's up on the screen here. Zero percent. Ouch. So it calls out the individual components here. You can see in the rating sheet. So you go through this list here. We got processor, super weak. We knew that. Boot drives weak. We knew that. Uh, memory is okay. OS is outdated. But compare it to other machines of the same type and we're way above average on the CPU. Very few outperform. And the same with the drive. Now the memory is just getting detected as some weird generic thing so there's no way to make a valid comparison there. And uh, it's just what it is probably with an older system like this. you get all the way down you can see the 256k cache and then it just kind of latency pegs from there so that's a Celeron's deficiency over a P4. Alright, so what do I think overall? Will it run Windows 7? And should it run Windows 7? This 2005 vintage Dell Dimension B110 did pass all the tests with flying colors and decent stability. But what about the performance? It was just not there. So let's go ahead and break it all down in our conclusion. Alright, so there's the specs again. 2.53 Celeron, 2 gig RAM, OS installation no problems, driver installation no problems. Running your office apps was fine, if a little slow. Photo editing even in the GIMP was pretty good. But once you started to say, I want to compress some files, it was slow. And getting online, forget about it, unless you wanted to do something real basic. YouTube, Windows Media Player had video playback issues, uh, Media Player had artifacts. So overall, it works, it's not ideal. This machine's much more at home on XP. So stay tuned for more on this machine. We'll test Windows 10, we'll test Linux. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more interesting tech videos.